When the series Dragon Ball came to the western part of the world, a lot of people weren't actually all that familiar with anime, and this was actually how a lot of people were first introduced to the animation style, myself included. I actually still remember the first time I watched Dragon Ball Z as a kid. I came in at about the third or fourth episode where Goku and Piccolo were fighting his brother Raditz, and I remember watching him die and thinking, what the hell is going on? But I still quite like the show, and I actually still watch it to this day, and have continued going all the way up to Dragon Ball Super. And with the new video game having just come out, I've been thinking about this show quite a lot recently, and so I've decided to do a Lands and Core video on the Z Fighters, especially as several people have actually requested this video for quite a while. Goku Now, as I said, this was the first anime that a lot of people in the western part of the world had ever seen, and so a lot of the studios were a bit worried that it wouldn't quite come over properly, eastern culture meeting western culture, and they thought people might reject it. So they decided to market Goku to be like Superman, which does kind of make sense. After all, there is a lot of similarities in their stories. Both of them are aliens who live on Earth, both have escaped the destruction of their homeworld in a rocket, and both are insanely more powerful than humans. And the reason I mention this is because they tried to make Goku a symbol of hope like Superman is, having him say lines where he is the symbol of hope to the world, even though this wasn't actually quite accurate to his character. I am the hope of the universe. I am the answer to all living things that cry out for peace. And they even mistranslated other things, such as his father being a scientist. Your father was an average fighter, Kakarot, but he was a brilliant scientist. And in truth, his father was a warrior, just like him. And a more accurate translation might have been to say that his father was a great strategist. But the truth is that Goku is very different in personality to Superman, and I mean very different. Whereas Superman is the symbol of hope and definitely belongs in that lands and core, Goku does not. He does bring hope to his friends, true, and he does have a great amount of hope, but I wouldn't really say he is a symbol of hope to the world. And even though he never gives up, that's really more because he does never think that he could actually lose a fight. So for me, it just doesn't make sense for his character. I can kind of see why people might think so, but I think there are other lands and cores that suit him better, such as willpower, which makes a lot of sense. After all, Goku never stops training and never stops improving his body and his power level. He's always pushing himself to his limits and then overcoming those limits, always becoming more and more powerful. So he fully qualifies for the willpower core, especially when the main qualification is being able to overcome great fear. And the only thing that Goku seems to fear is his wife, Chi Chi. Other than that, he's pretty fearless, even facing down Beerus, the literal god of destruction, and being pretty cool about the whole thing. But with that being said, although he could be in the Will Lantern Corps, and he definitely qualifies, I actually think that the best core for him is the Life Lantern Corps, for two reasons. One, he is so full of life. He is always very loud, very running around, always got energy. He's actually quite a good representative of life. He's just bursting with energy, and he does defend all the life around him when he can frequently saving the lives of innocent people, and even saving the lives of his mortal enemies. I'm thinking Frieza, Vegeta, even Boo, and his brother back in the day. He actually tried to save all of these people, and some of their lives he was able to save because they kind of gave up their evil ways. And the second, more important reason, is because the Life Lantern Corps is the most powerful Lantern Corps, with the combined abilities of all of the other Lantern Corps. And that is Goku. He is the strongest fighter in the universe. Sure, he constantly fights people who are stronger than him, but he always finds a way to overcome their strength and become stronger, usually by going through various different transformations and finding new levels of power. And that's why the Life Lantern Core works so well. He's the strongest fighter and best representative of life, so I think it makes perfect sense for Goku to be in the White Lantern Core. But again, it could easily just be willpower, so this one is really personal preference. But personally, I feel like the White Lantern Corps makes more sense for him. Vegeta Now, Vegeta only has two options, and they are, of course, the Sinestro Lantern Corps of Fear and the Red Lantern Corps of Rage. And though he has certainly earned his place in the Fear Lantern Corps, as pretty much everyone is scared of him, I'd still say that given his demeanor and approach to life, that he actually belongs in the Red Lantern Corps. He is constantly belligerent and angry, and in the case of Frieza, he even wants revenge for the destruction of his home planet and entire species. And the Red Lantern Corps loves revenge. And really, that's all there is to say. 
Anyone who's familiar with the character will know exactly what I mean when I say that Vegeta is a very angry man. He is constantly yelling pretty much every line he says and snapping at everyone around him. He does inspire a lot of fear, yes, and he definitely qualifies, but he does seem to suit the Red Lantern Corps better given his personality. And I do have to say that although he has previously in his past conquered worlds and killed God alone knows how many people, he still doesn't quite qualify for the Death Lantern Corps. I know some people would say this does qualify him as he has a high kill count, but I would remind them that although he was like that in his past, in more recent times he has changed. And although I wouldn't exactly say that he's become a hero, he definitely has acted a lot more heroic and he's fought to defend life in recent years rather than take it. So even if he might have once qualified for the Death Lantern Corps, he definitely doesn't anymore. He really belongs with the Red Lanterns. Piccolo Now Piccolo is quite an interesting case and his story is a little bit complicated. But basically his father was formed from the evil parts of Kami. Kami separated the evil from his body and created Piccolo. And then when this Piccolo died, he laid an egg which became the Piccolo that we know now. And as this kid, King Piccolo Jr. was quite frankly, evil. He basically was a demon who was feared by everyone he knew, met or anyone who'd even heard of him. And he was very much an evil person. So at this point in his life, there really isn't a debate that he has to be in the Fear Lands and Core. But as we know, as time went on, Piccolo changed. He took Gohan on to train him and looked after him. And though at first he just took Gohan to use him for his power so he could be his weapon, over time he actually came to care for Gohan like he was his own son. And then as Gohan grew up, he cared for Gohan's daughter as well. And then later, he re-merged with Kami and changed even more. No longer was he such a hate, rage fueled machine. Yes, he still has a tough demeanor, but he grew more kind and compassionate. And though he still certainly imparts enough fear to be in the Sinestro Lantern Corps, I think this change means that he belongs in either the Love Lantern Corps or the Compassion Lantern Corps. And it's actually a little hard to say which. After all, he does love Gohan and Gohan's daughter, like they're his own but he has also grown compassion for others and become a protector of humanity. So I would say it goes in three stages. As King Piccolo Jr, he is in the Sinestro Corps. Then later when he takes on Gohan, he would be better suited for the Love Lantern Corps. After all, he cares about him so much that he even sacrifices his own life just to save him. And then later when he has reabsorbed Kami, I'd say that he's then a contender for the Compassion Corps. But to be fair, I am being a bit generous with this because Kami's in there. Really, he probably still would lean more towards the Love Lands and Core. So he probably still belongs in the Love Lands and Core to this day. It's really too close to call. So this is just something each of us has to decide for ourselves. And again, although he could be in the Sinestro Lands and Core, I don't think he'd actually want to choose that. I think he would prefer to be in the Love Lands and Core because he's kind of changed his ways and become a hero. And I know for a lot of these, I'm kind of saying it's up to you to decide which one. But that's because some of these characters qualify for several different ones in different parts of their life. And they have so many emotions going on for them that they don't have one dominant emotion that's obvious. So some of this is really up to you. After all, this is very much a discussion video. Trunks. Now Trunks is a warrior from the future who watched all of his allies die, including his master Gohan, and probably watched quite a lot of his friends die as well. And yet still, even after seeing that, and after fighting the androids and being defeated by them time and time again, he didn't give up hope. He kept on fighting and eventually found a way to travel back in time in order to defeat the androids in the past. And this makes a huge statement about his character. And it means really that he has two basic Lantern Corps options. Either he belongs in the Lantern Corps of Willpower, as he clearly has an iron will that has served him very well, or he belongs in the Lantern Corps of Hope, as he never stopped fighting, never lost hope, and never gave up. But instead, he fought on until he defeated the two androids, who were always more deadly and stronger than him. And to be honest, this is a man who can go either way, hope or will. They're so evenly matched that it's hard to make a decision, as he really belongs in both of them. In fact, I would love to see him have both rings, especially since the Green Lantern ring gets extra power from the blue one, so he'd be pretty unstoppable. But since we're only going to put him in one Lantern Corps, and given the bleakness of his future, his life, and the pain that he has suffered, I do think the Lantern Corps of Hope makes more sense. But again, he can easily go into the Will Lantern Corps. This is really up for you to decide because he has both. But I'd say given the hopelessness of his future and the fact that he carried on with a smile regardless, means that he definitely belongs in the Hope Lantern Corps. Freezer. Now with any supervillain, fear is always an option. After all, they're a villain. 
But let's face it, Freezer has to be in the Death Lantern Corps. He's probably killed more people than anyone in the universe, apart from Beerus the Destroyer perhaps. And not only has he killed people one on one and in large amounts, he's even destroyed entire planets and wiped out entire species. This guy has a death toll number that is in the billions, if not the trillions. He even had an empire which expanded across the galaxy and conquered god knows how many planets, so he must have killed an insane amount of people while doing this. So really, the Black Lantern Corps of Death is his only option. I mean, yeah, he could still get a fear ring, and if he was actually wearing a ring powered by fear, and considering he's pretty much the most feared creature in the galaxy, next to Beerus the Destroyer, well, it would make him insanely powerful and be amazing to watch. But we also have to take into consideration the fact that Freezer has actually spent a lot of his time on the show being dead. And even though he's now resurrected again, that still means he is capable of wielding a black ring, as anyone who has died and been resurrected can wield one, or at the very least be wielded by one. So again, the black ring really makes the most sense for him. But if you like the idea of him being in a fear lantern core, I would love to see some fan art. And that is the Z Fighters lantern cores. Now, obviously, I haven't done every single fighter. I mean, there's quite a lot of characters. So let me know if there are any other of the fighters that you'd love to see me do a video on. And I'm actually thinking of doing a video about Lantern Corps for different anime characters. And I may just do a selection from different anime shows. So if you would like to see that in a future video, please give me your suggestions on which characters you'd like to see. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching. And feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.